Hey Kotaku, I am here with Gavin Moore from Sony Japan and we are looking at his baby of a game, Puppeteer. And I think I just got my head cut off. Yeah, oh, all right, it grew back. <laughs> so, so Gavin, tell us a little bit about what we're looking at right now in Puppeteer. Okay, so this is a new uh, uh, stage we're showing in New York. Um, this one's um, basically you're um, being oh. sucked down to the depths of the ocean and the sea god, who's a sushi chef, has <laughs> sent you off on this mission to get back his trident from his rival sushi chef, who's a giant octopus. Ah, of course. Of course. Okay. Happens every day. So we are riding a squid to... You are. Get You're that, riding uh, a mechanical squid on your way there. Why does a sushi chef need a trident? Because it's his power. That's how he can make his awesome sushi. <laughs> okay. If, if that, is that how he cuts the sushi? Or, or? Well, he uses that to basically uh, gather up, using his magic to gather up all his fish. That seems very unsanitary. So you need to cut there with square? Ah, oh. okay, square, got and it. And you keep cutting faster and faster, you go faster. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, so, so this is kind of a platformer? Right, it's um, a platform game, but it's all set inside a magical theater. Yes. So as you can actually see, there are cogs on the bottom. Oh, you can't. Uh -oh. Uh, don't look. Just play the game. Okay. <laughs> your, your, your viewers can see there are cogs on the bottom, and it's actually what happens is that the instead of moving through the world, oh. you died. Oh, no. The Gavin. whole theater moves around you. Ah. Right, so, so... Okay, we're coming back to life. We're good. We're good. We're a frog. Does his head change at all? Is that yeah, they're basically the head heads of your life. So you basically have three lives, and you can find new heads. Ah. And then you basically um, have three seconds to get your head back if you get hit. And if you don't, then uh, you lose a life. Okay. But we have a hundred different heads to collect in the game, and each of those heads has a special power. So somewhere in the game, you can oh, you can use those heads to unlock uh, bonus stages or defeat bosses or find characters that you can have or obviously use heads to find heads. Ah. And okay, obviously so our uh, actual hero actually's main uh, weapon is a pair of magical scissors and those are not only his weapon but they're also a, a means of movement. Um, so basically you can cut objects and keep cutting, you can fly. And so you can get to places you normally couldn't get to. Uh -huh. Now this section that we're playing now, as you can see, the theatre keeps changing. Yeah. And we're wanting, what we want to do is change what you're doing every five to ten minutes. Uh -huh. So this may change three times in, but I think it's about five minutes, five minutes, and then we'll completely change what you're doing. Huh. So at the moment we're riding on the back of a squid, but then we're going to fight our giant octopus, and we're going to do that on a kind of hexagon stage. Okay. So not all of the platform levels in this game will be no, constantly no, no. moving. In fact, these rides are very far and few between in the game. Okay. And we have... Uh, oh, we're whoa, reversing whoa, direction. Whoa, oh, that jump, threw me jump, off. Jump, ah. duck, jump, ah. Get ready to jump. Um, these are very far and few between. Most of the game actually takes place going into the screen, if you uh -huh. with the stage coming towards you. So this is kind of throwing me off that I was going right to yeah, uh, left yeah, to right, yeah, and now yeah, yeah. I'm right this to isn't, left. This isn't any, uh, this isn't a child's game by any means. No, it this is yeah, it's it's tricky. Yeah. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa! Ah, uh, no, I died. Are there difficulty levels? Are uh, we playing? There aren't difficulty levels, but as I say, the two-player, um, I can actually move this character around and click on objects. Ah. Uh. And stuff and find new heads, etc. Find new lives. No, it's good. I like that it's challenging. It reminds uh, me of the Donkey Kong Country games. Right, right. It's, it's a challenge. And that's really challenging. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are always, always tough. Um, but as two player, it gets a lot easier. Yeah. But then again, it also can be harder because the secondary characters can get in the way. They can actually pull your head off, for instance, if they want to. Uh -huh. uh, but they can actually carry extra lives, and they can do a lot more stuff that you can do in two player than you can do in one player. It's also really cheap. It's thirty nine ninety nine. Okay, cool. So, which I think is really good price to come out at. You know, end of the PlayStation Three, does something special for people. So now I'm using some of my hero heads. I have a bomb here that I'm going to use, and as you can see, I can cut. Oh, I lost the head. And cut up here. Ah. And get rid of this little baddie for a minute. And then throw a bomb up there and then I can keep cutting you see and so now I'm at the top I'm gonna to cut his tentacle and really upset him uh -huh. and he's gonna throw us out 
over the top of the screen. Now, most people will call this a boss battle. Um, in Puppeteer, we don't call this a boss battle at all. This is a medium, uh, medium kind of battle character. Uh -huh. uh, we actually have 13 huge boss battles in our game, and they are the uh, generals of the evil Moon Bear King, who's your main enemy in the game, who's eaten your head basically. The evil Moon Bear King. King, yeah. Okay. Who's the guy that? Uh, this is just a sushi chef. Yeah, this is just a sushi chef. So we're going to hide in this little. Um, miso soup bowl and, and, and high for me. Okay, he, this is not, if I was at a restaurant like ordering sushi and this was my chef, I, I do not think I would stay. <laughs> yeah, he's not particularly nice, I must no, admit. He does no. not seem like a nice guy. What kind of sushi does he make? You'll see that in a minute, actually. Okay. He's going to throw us back down into the restaurant again. Okay. Ah, so is this whole level a restaurant? We yeah, were just... it was, you can actually see like right, right, there's right. Uh, like Negi Toro here, which is uh, uh, leek and leek tuna, uni, ah. right? Salmon ah. is actually written there. So and this stuff. game will make you hungry. Yeah, it's actually kind of funny because if, if you listen to this stage, the secondary character keeps on going on about how hungry she is and how she wants to eat sushi and nice. stuff. So there goes another leg. There goes another leg. Is the goal to cut off all, all, all of his legs, unfortunately. Does he have eight? He does have eight, but we, we're not going to cut all of those off. Okay. Because that would be too long. Yeah. Is the premise here that you are the puppeteer? Or there is a puppeteer controlling this whole stage? Well, puppeteer, I mean, it's a, it's a magical puppet theater, uh -huh. which is completely narrated to you and acted to you. And our actors actually break the fourth wall and talk to the audience and forget their lines and stuff like that. <laughs> um, but also it's called Puppeteer because our poor relentless hero here is basically being used by everyone. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's all about who you can trust and, uh, you know, find out who actually is pulling the strings. Is it is the baddie really the Moonbear King and is he that bad, for instance? Ah. Or is it several other nasty characters that you meet and are they nasty or not? I mean, I think you just gave us the answer. Well, he, well actually, he, he might be pretty bad. <laughs> But then they all might be pretty bad. Right. So, actually, I am going to clear this and show you this because I think this is kind of a bizarre thing to put in a game. <laughs> um, one of the things when I was making this was I wrote it as a three act play, uh -huh. but I ended up writing seven acts <laughs> because we just had a lot of fun writing it and putting in all these Monty Python esque situations that you get yourselves into. And uh, I'm a big. Terry Gilliam, Tim Burton fan as well. And do you remember the start of um, Baron Munchausen? They're actually singing in the play about the Baron, mm -hmm. right? And then the, the actual the story, they're in a play about the Baron and it turns into his story, his actual life. They Is that... see it as the, as the actual, you know, the Baron story. Uh -huh. So, and I'd never seen this in the game. I'm not saying that the game is a musical, but we do have a musical in the game. Just a musical piece <laughs> so in the game. This just turns into a musical. Yeah, it just turns into a musical piece here where he gets his trident back and starts singing about it. And his mermaid subjects can't start singing about how wonderful the trident is. And then they can't stop singing, so he gets angry with them and, and kind of <laughs> you know, starts singing and stuff. Sometimes you just got to throw a musical into your game. Yeah, exactly. And what's really cool about this is actually Patrick, who did the music, said, I want to do the musical. I want to sing this line, this role. So. Yeah. We said, yeah, sure, go and, you know. <laughs> Well, okay, cool. Well, yeah. so this has been our walkthrough of the new stuff in, in Puppeteer. Thanks so much, Gavin. No, it's a pleasure. Thank you. Great.